Uh, Joe mm-hmm. Madden mm-hmm. was was talking to Spiegel and Parkins, and it's happening again. What's happening? Yeah, the Cubs lead is down to two, <gasps> and people want the Cubs to do something. Right, 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 right. You know, there were reports earlier today about do- mandatory batting practice, which it turns out weren't true. Yeah, Nothing's- I read that. I was like, why would he? Why would he change up that that right. drastically? And, 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 look, he's he said this so many times now, and he even said, you know, people. This is getting boring for me to say this. That. And, and he tried to explain we don't feel how right, what feel. his job yeah. is and what players and managers can't do right. that fans can do. I think my message has been consistent with them, like I've said, and that's what I want to continue to do. Um, it's not about uh, rousing pep talks. It's about it's about working good at bats against good pitchers. For me, for us, we just have to approach the day in the same way. I know I get boring with saying that, but mm-hmm. it's true. Um, so, you know, we had a tough weekend. Two good games before that, two bad games before that, six good games before that. You know, I just the way this thing has gone down. You go into Major League Clubhouse, uh, you support your guys, you trust your guys, you get ready as you always get ready, and you go out there and you play the game. It's just not an easy game. Um, obviously, look what's happening with the Dodgers right now. It's just not as easy as some people think. So, for me, it's just about consistency right now. It happens every team. It happened every team this year at some point. I promise you, all 30 at some point this year felt that. And uh, and we felt that for a bit, too. What we did last, remember, before the All-Star break, we won that last game going into Pittsburgh. It happens to every team every year. Nobody's immune. It's part of the game. When you play 162 and the ebb and flow of the season and uh, you know the road trips and no days off, we just came off a 20-day stretch uh, without a day off. It just it just happens. It's just part of it. And that's why you got to play them all. That's why uh, the number 162 is so ominous. And he said, look, his his job is just to make sure everybody on his team is ready to play the next game and to make sure the right guys are in the right places to succeed at the right times. But it's the fans just clamor, well, do something, act on this, make me feel better by your actions. It's back to Jock Peterson, what we were talking about on his Instagram. Where, Why aren't you in the gym or the batting right, cage? Stop smiling! <laughs> right. Or do you remember when, when people... Dude, his Instagram legit said, I'm happy for you and your dog. Would love to see you getting swings in instead of this. Like, the, the guy's hanging out with his dog. And people are like, why aren't you? Oh, yeah, there was a Chris Bryant mentioned on his Instagram, too. I'm sure Chris Bryant right now is looking at his World Series ring and not smiling at his dog. Like You're not allowed to smile well, what in a losing streak? Remember when, when Jay Cutler was pilloried for going out to dinner after at a loss? He, he, yeah, at, at Mastro's. How when he, dare yeah. he go out to dinner and <laughs> he, eat food? He's walking up steps. He's got a torn ACL. Yeah, dude, it was. Um, but this is the thing. I, do you think that there are as many of those guys and girls as there used to be? Yes. Do you? I think that the number is... Or they're just louder? I think, yes. Okay. It, it's, it's the hockey minority that we talk about every once in a while mm-hmm. that screams at you. I'm not, I'm not saying that these are the hockey fans, but this is, that was the genesis of that, that kind of conversation. Same of, kind of math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we need to do, Dan, is round those people up, right, and ask them what they need to be done. And instead of, you know, well, Mike, might hang up on you. Tanny might shoot you. <laughs> we might make fun of you. But but honestly, if you're one of these people who needs to see something, like Dan said, or feel like they feel how you feel, 312-644-6767, because I need to know what you need. So we don't have to keep doing this. I feel like it's – I feel like – Yeah, let's just have it out. I, I feel like, like – what, What's a reasonable expectation? And, 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 and fellas on the other side of the glass, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like with this station, for years and years and years, we can – you know, we joke about certain things that we are we know are going to happen like clockwork, but this is one of those things that shouldn't continue to happen to me. Yeah, you can be a fan, you're invested, you're emotional, all those things, but what fan these days has to realize or has to has to come to the to the to the reckoning that they don't feel how you feel for a reason. They are the professionals in this situation. Like, when I am doing what I do, I may not feel about a segment the way you may feel, whether it be the Chuck in St. Charles or when we're messing around talking to Virgil yesterday because I have 16 or 17 more of these to do today, you know? Like, when you turn off and go, yeah, that was dope, or I hate that guy, and you hold that, I can't hold it for that much longer because I got to move on. If you're that fan, if you're that guy, or if you're that girl, 312 644 
What is it that you and, – and, and I'm honestly asking. Why do you need it and what do you need? Yeah. What, what, like you have to tell me what you think Anthony Rizzo isn't feeling that you feel that is applicable and will help them win. See, that to me, that, that's where we sort of get to the, like the blood-brain barrier here okay. is uh, it do, even if you think – Get in the cage. Take ground ball. It, th- there's Social n- media is there, good for that. There is nothing. Social media is good for that. That shows it works. It's, you're not going to be more likely Especially to baseball. win the World Series yeah. by doing that. Yeah. You're just not. And not, not by the time you've reached this level. Is it because you spaz out because the season is so long and you, you, you like riding that roller coaster? Because if that's the case, cool. Then we can then then you can easily tell yourself to stop doing it, but if you're a baseball fan of any kind of you know tenure, because everybody likes to give out the credentials how long they've been watching the Cubs. If you're a baseball fan of any kind of tenure, you don't even have to have been in this business to understand that they're not supposed to feel how you feel, and maybe that's maybe that's your thinking too. Like, yeah, I'm supposed to be an idiot. I'm supposed to do this, but as long as you're not applying it yeah, that's to your job why, as right, a fan, right? As long as you're not applying it to this is why they're losing. I'm telling you, Dan, go on Jock Peterson's Instagram. You can pull it up. There are people who are who are telling him what he is and what he isn't based on him going to In N Out Burger. Or based on him, you know, hey, he was underneath a sprinkler system, you know, getting ready to go in a pool, you know, get you know, get a little water on yourself before you jump in a pool or whatever the case may be. And it it was like, oh, you're a little chubby there. That's maybe that's why you're not getting the ball out of the yard. It's like, dude, like if I this is why also a little break break a little news to to people out there. This is why athletes treat fans the way they do. And I know people don't want to hear this right now, but this is why athletes can give two S's about fans for the most part. There's certain guys who are like genuinely good dudes. Like Sam Ocho is a genuinely good dude, and we'll have a word for you at the local Mariano's or wherever you car wash, wherever you see him at. But there's certain I I would like to put a number on it. If I had to put a number on it, I'd say 70% of the people who are getting paid to 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 entertain you athletically want nothing to do with you because of that. Like, do you really think that a guy in a slump should never smile? What what like he shouldn't eat, or what what do you? This is what this is their job, and sometimes people struggle at their jobs. Are they then not allowed any sort of diversion, right. or are you mad at somebody for posting a photo of right. them smiling? As if are, are they somehow invalidating your feelings of fear? That the t- or or in- or I, I I usually like to think Dan it's a pockets question, like how angry are you about your pockets? Because this person is making this amount of money to play a kid's game and your three hours of, of you know, your, your diversion is being sullied or ruined by losses and you're thinking about the money. Like, there's a little bit of envy in there as well. Not a little bit. There's a lot of envy in there as well. Because you'd like to think that if you had this talent and you had this dough and you had this exposure, that as soon as the game is over, you are doing a million push-ups and then following that up with a million swings until your your wrists are raw and your your hands are bloodied and then the game starts the next day and you're still in the cage swinging. I think that's what it is, unfortunately, too. There's a lot of dudes out there who like who don't understand that this is a gig. Now, Tanny. And, and and Shep, would you agree or disagree that the understanding is is more prevalent? I don't think as many of those people exist as as they used to because we've talked about this a lot. Or do you think that those guys and girls are out there in the same numbers because of social media and some of those other things that we that we're privy to? I think they're still out there, and people probably think that at home of. Oh, get that smile off your face. What are you thinking about, Rizzo? But I think because of sports radio, I think because of social media, it's made you more aware of the people's existence, right. and it's brought more attention to them that they don't want to be put in that light, and they keep it to themselves more. But when you start hearing that, you start hearing Joe Madden ask directly about it, and he says exactly the right thing. It doesn't work. If you respond to this this idea of urgency, we talked to Lynn Castro about it, the idea of fear versus urgency, and mm-hmm. urgency... Just mean, and it's you can't be urgent in baseball. You can't play baseball harder. 
And practicing baseball harder in September is not necessarily going to make you better. But fans constantly say, do something. You act on the way I feel. How about you let them do their jobs and you trust that a World Series winning manager and multiple World Series winning upper management and a roster of guys who seem to know what they're doing. If, you know, if they may succeed, they might fail, but it's not going to be because they. How, they do you, how would you tell them to ride that wave then? How would you tell say, them go to go ahead, to ride, to ride the wave, but don't emotion. project it on the, on the players themselves? Right. Your emotions belong to you. You are doing your job and your part as a fan right. to go through the feelings. Dude, I tell, we tell the Texans all the time, like, our job is to, to do this, and your job is to bitch. And everyone seems like they're doing their job on a daily basis. You remember when, when Dexter Fowler was responding to the, the yeah, Cubs fans so, when he went yeah, to the Cardinals? He was yeah. like, hey. I got 80 mil, bro. I, I do, this is my job. <laughs> my family this is going to be good for a little bit. This is my family. It's like, it's like I, th- I, my, this is my work. And I was offered a contract to work for right. this team, right? right. right? And There's 30 franchises in the company that I work for. It shouldn't be difficult. <laughs> and, and for the know? people who are out there who feel that way, seriously, like, jump on and tell us what you think will change. Because there's, there's that dangerous vibe, too, Dan, about telling fans that you don't matter in the outcome of the game. Maybe if you're there and you rattle a guy or you get a false start and you go, yeah, we were loud. We forced a false start. You know, that stupid horn goes off and Pat Manley is angry because you're in Minnesota doing it. But, like, if, if you're one of those guys or girls, honestly, how does that manifest itself in terms of not only your fandom but changing the outcome of anything? Or is that, is that your way of punching a wall without punching a wall? Is that your way of getting it out? Do you feel like you've wasted those three hours, even though you've probably been taken somewhere emotionally that the rest of your day didn't take you? So you should be actually you should you should (laughs) there should be some kind of gratification in that as well, because if you work a job that you can't wait to get home from to watch that game and you've been some emotion has been evoked and you you feel like, all right, this isn't the one I wanted today because it's a it's a it's a, a sad one or an angry one. You probably got you probably got what you you signed up for in that day's in that day's viewing experience. Nick and Crystal Lake, you're on the score. Hi, Nick. Hey guys. Uh, you know, um, I don't know that you could just blame fans for this. I remember I was listening to the score back in the '90s uh, when Eric Kramer was caught smiling on the sidelines in a game the Bears were losing. Dan McNeil and mm-hmm. Dan McNeil mm-hmm. went off, and it was. Eric Kramer could not come back from that in the mind of Dan McNeil, that well, he was a loser. That was a personal thing. Point yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I would I, say the same thing. I mean, it, it, just because – just because it was a coworker doesn't mean my my opinion. No, changed. I said it at the time. I, yeah. I was I was involved in that, and I thought that was that was yeah. unfortunate and unfair yeah. because players are could you be caught on the side. You could be smiling for any reason. In like the we mid- just got our ass kicked, in the middle of dude. a game. We yeah. started laughing at I, it. I thought that was ridiculous at the time, and think it's ridiculous now. But I don't I don't necessarily think that's influenced fan behavior twenty years later. No, I don't either. I'm just saying before social media, before mm-hmm. any of this, those feelings just exist. In the heat of the moment, or what you feel the importances of a game, you know that that this person who's getting paid a lot of money somehow isn't it taking it as seriously as you are. Yeah, but Nick, Nick, block? but Nick, after you after you're yeah, done feeling that, like there's we're no so way, far removed from that. There's Nick. There's no way in hell that you could think that a especially a football player, like we're taking it to another level now. There's no way in hell that I would think that a football player ever would think that there was less on the line than me as a fan. You know, like, he doesn't care as much as, 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 as I care about the game. He, dude, he's out there dying. They're out there dying every single time that ball is snapped. So, especially when it comes to football, I'm never going to be like, ah, I care more than that guy. No, I don't. That guy's going to die because of this game. To being touched all over the text line, I didn't know it was that real. What do you mean? I liked it better when you told us not to how to feel about our sports. I just asked a question. Hey, easy, pal. <laughs> 815, man, golf. I liked it better before you told us how to feel about our sports. What Is it okay t- to just watch no, just for fun? We're asking That's you. Cub Fan Lee, by the all way. All right, Cub Fan Lee. Uh, Call in question, and fan. explain why what, what, what yeah. your needs are as a fan that you project onto the players. And I said I just wanted to hear it. 
I just wanted right. to know why that why we continue to have this conversation. You no, know, it's telling you how to feel. The point yeah. is, understand that you feeling what you feel is not the player's responsibility. Simple. They don't have to snap to action because you're nervous. Simple. Right? The Bernstein and Goff Show, you have the score. For me, for us, we just have to approach the day in the same way. I know I get boring with saying that, but mm-hmm. it's true. Um, so, you know, we had a tough weekend. Two good games before that. Two bad games before that. Six good games before that. You know, I just the way this thing has gone down. From the 414, who says it's disappointment manifested by anger and insults. You got green eyed millionaire Johnny Baseball and Chris Bryant hitting ground balls, watching third strikes. It makes you lash out and say, F you, KB, or your wife is fat, KB. Okay. There's something. That's the envy part. There's something wrong with you. Yeah. If watching somebody, especially with, I mean, he's having an awesome offensive year. He's got 59 RBI, Dan. And this, and, and, but, but that makes, seriously, that watching somebody strike out makes you reach out to them directly and insult their wife? How and why can that uh, possibly you know happen? Up. You know, I mean. How, how can that go directly to that? People are. That's insane. Poor morally, um, don't have a lot going on. And, you know, I'd like to paint him as a, a bad light. Where did anybody can. teach you that was better. okay? <laughs> where, where did anybody, where did you learn that that was okay? Not, a love, not enough love. Not that's enough not education. An okay, that's not, not an okay money. response. Yeah, man. That is not what You'd you do. You'd be surprised, bro. You'd be surprised. Hell, we don't even do athletic things. We talk about athletes and, and people come at us. Yeah, right people, people, I, I'll never forget. I showed Nicole uh, uh, <laughs> an Instagram comment from some dude. Who I had to eventually block because he had had issues and he was, you know, he, he told me, he was like, I'm off my meds right now. You don't want to mess with me. That kind of thing. So I'm like, all right, let's get him up out of here. Yep. But he's like, you and your bug eyed baby. And I showed the comments to Nicole and she's, she started laughing her ass off. Like you have to be conditioned to not let that kind of stuff get to you. So just think if you're a fan, how are you letting something get to you to the point where you want to go attack a dude's wife or talk about him being a you know green-eyed smiley character? Like, dude, love you. The problem is not enough people love themselves, and I I find it hilarious when people go. Ted oh, Cruz does well, dude. <laughs> Quite often, apparently. <laughs> apparently, every once in a while, you hit that like button instead of instead of bookmark. <laughs> you know what I'm Ted Cruz is no problem Bro. with that. Yeah, my my handlers. Oh, uh-huh. you know what you're handling, all uh-huh. right? And little Teddy, <laughs> <laughs> little cruisy. Yeah. Um, dude, you gotta you gotta like the people were like, oh, you you love the sound of your voice, or you love yourself too much. I'm like, bro, there's a lot of people out there who don't love themselves, like who don't like themselves, and that's how it's manifested right there by getting angry at Chris Bryant. The, the he's the least offensive person maybe in all of sports. <laughs> And you're mad at him because he hasn't hit 35 home runs at this point in the MLB season. You're an idiot. And if the Cubs fans are screaming, do something, do something, emergency team meeting, batting practice, get in the cage. You want to paint all of them in that manner. But the fact that Joe Madden has to address this, it's getting kind of weird. I also want to talk about Joe Madden and his matchups, tell, telling Kyle Schwarber about his matchups. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You're the bad matchup. That's why he keeps bringing up matchups with you. Miguel Cabrera has no matchup issue. You know, the, the Joey Votto has no one he's going to sit against. Like, at some point, we got to stop treating this like it is. Paulo on the north side. You're on the score. Hey, fellas. Hey. Um, I was always confused about – a little while back, it was the first time I heard it when I heard a radio host um, talking to a fan. They called in, and they kept saying we in reference to themselves and their team. And the radio host was like, it's not we, and they kept correcting them. And that was the first time I actually heard that and thought about it. And I always find it weird, I guess, because I, I always kind of like I was the thought of we as a fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as we and stuff. And then, you know, yeah, I mean, when I've heard you guys break down why, I mean, I understand. I mean, obviously, they, they work independently, not, you yeah. know. But I, it's I, your I, ownership. I, it's your ownership of the event and, and something that you've invested in. I understand what you're saying. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so I was find that kind of, especially it was somewhat, I, I think, you know, semantics or pedantic when, when someone's calling and trying to make a point and they kept crapping on the we part when that wasn't even the point. Like, you know, and it was like... And I was, yeah, I go back and forth with it. When, when a guy is making an awful point and he keeps saying we over and over again, it kind of, you know, it's, it's one of those stick to landing things like, all right, dude, just get to your point. The we stuff and, and, and calling guys coach, I mean, you got guys here that do it. 
uh, behind these microphones. But, that, but I think that's different. That if somebody wants, I, I think I, I've, I've sort of grown, it's a level of investment. I've grown to find it mostly harmless if somebody says "we." It, when I, it used to bother me a lot yeah, more. Yeah, I know. But then when he, when somebody says what they're saying now, it's like you get so mad that you actually lash out at the athlete. Social or, media. Or it get, let's get back to this. The, what the issue at hand here it comes down to Jock Peterson's Instagram mm-hmm. in the midst of this historic losing streak. And people not saying it's not okay for him to be smiling. Think about that. It is every. This is a, there's a massive outpouring. It wasn't just one person saying, "What are you doing? You can't be smiling with your dog during a losing streak. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Like that? What? What? What do you think they do after a game? They take a shower. They go home. Have a meal. It's their job. Right. They go to work. So people have bad days at work, and then they go home. You know what they do? They put on something that makes them feel better. They put on some music in the car, you know or what, they, or they watch them. This is it, though. These are the people that have four out of their five days are bad days at work. So when they go home, that's supposed to be their their you know their their recess. That's supposed to be their time where you're you're here to entertain me and make me feel better about what just happened the previous eight hours of my day. And if you're going to lose during that time, I don't care about your time. I, this is my time to get away. I mean, are these, do these same people like... Like people who like their jobs live longer. But I just I mean, wonder, there's a reason. If you, if, does that same person flip on an HBO comedy special and then send direct messages to the comedian and say, your jokes didn't make me laugh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Social media, dude, social media has emboldened... From the president on down, social yeah. media has emboldened everybody in this in this day. And, and people are like, I don't know why you give them the time of day, Goff. It's like, listen, man, sometimes I'm showing you. And other times I'm not even thinking about it when I'm replying. I'm just messing around with people. Like, I'm not sitting like, oh, my God, I can't believe you. Oh, you don't like my show. Man, come on, man. Kidding me? I, I and I lived in a we state for two years where I fought. Daddy people. loved me. Yeah, Daddy yeah. loved me. I fought people for two years with that we stuff. And I was like, you know what? I can't fight anymore. Your fan investment is your fan investment. Just just do whatever you feel is necessary, I guess. Tina and Lyle is on WSCR. Hi, Tina. Hi. Hi, Tina. What's up? Uh, hi. I was I was just thinking that a lot of these guys, I think they get upset because they think the players should be playing hard or harder, or doing more, taking extra batting practice, practicing in pads, whatever. But in their own jobs, not applying that same education. I'm a small business owner, and I certainly had employees who worked very hard, and I also had plenty of employees who shut their computer off at 10 to 5. Yeah, and I mean, they leave at the end of the day, and they're not going home and figuring out ways to work better. They're not. No. But they expect these guys who are professional athletes, and that's their job, to somehow have that consume their whole life. Yeah, Tina. And it's, 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 if we go back to money, it's about let, – let's stop messing around. It's about the money. It, it's about the money that you make, and it's about the money that your favorite team or your favorite player is, is being paid or shelling out. It's about the money. And when you see the numbers that these guys are making, you think that I would do such and such if I was making that kind of money. I would do it differently. I would do it harder. I'd be more thankful. And then you get into a situation where you get a promotion. You're like, man, this is way too much responsibility for me. I understand how these guys feel. Maybe I was an idiot. Like, it's about the money. In the end, it all comes down to how you project about money and about, you know, sometimes the, 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 the sub-conversations of whether it be gender or race and all these other things. But it's about the money. Guys are angry. You get this much money to play a kid's game. And it's like, yeah, but I got to stay in shape year-round. There's no getting fat in football or baseball or basketball anymore or else your ass will be called out. I got to I, I, I got when when my kid is graduating, I got to be, you know, on the road doing this like the, the, the sacrifices that these guys make and these girls make. I think that people don't take into account often enough. That's why they rail the way they do, because they see those three hours and they think those three hours are, 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 is everything. They don't think about the work that leads into that. Like the guy yesterday with the Kevin White stuff. Oh, he didn't earn this money. Well, guess what? They did. For two years in West Virginia, he turned himself into a top 10 prospect. Heard every last dollar of it. Damn right. As simple as that. And people don't see it as such. They see it as, I make this amount of money. If I was making the money that you are making right now, I would give my left foot for it. 
And when no, you'd be the same lazy exactly. piece of crap you are now. Money just reveals who you were when you were yep. broke. Yep. That's all it is. If you couldn't keep a dollar in your pocket when you were broke, if you get $10 million, you ain't going to be able to keep those dollars in your pocket either. We That's see that amid professional yes. athletes and entertainers yes. and everybody else. And, you are and who radio you are. hosts. Some, yes. Michigan City, Jonathan, you're on WSCR The Score. Hey, how's it going? Fine. Hey, Jason, it's Jonathan. All right. Hey, Jonathan, how you doing? I met you at Four Winds. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah. How you doing, man? Oh, okay. Pretty good, pretty good. What do you got for um, us today? I had, um, actually, I had an um, encounter on Twitter with Dane Chris, the quarterback from Notre Dame, a few years back. And, and Farmer um, once he, told uh, me even better than Brady Quinn. Basically, he, 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 um, he lost the game. Okay. And um, I sent him a, a nasty message on Twitter, and he actually responded back. Why'd you send him? Yeah, a nasty why message, send him a nasty John? message on Twitter? Because I, um, my grandpa, I've had, um, we've had season tickets in the family probably for fifty years. I've gone to every single Notre Dame home game for the last maybe twenty. But why'd you send? Yeah, him why a nasty why message? send him a nasty message on Twitter? Do you think he was trying to play poorly? <laughs> it's, but okay. At the time, I at the time I was upset and. My emotions got to me. It, it, it um, yeah, but the that's future, that's you know, it came. I, I realized, you know, I screwed up. I shouldn't, I shouldn't even have done that. Yeah, that's a self, that's where, a self control issue, Jonathan. And, and that's the yeah, thing, the, 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 I, especially I, uh, when you're talking about kids, football, man. I don't take my football as serious anymore. Oh, because of that so, interaction, because of this, yeah, because of that okay. situation. Well, that's I good. Okay, to, uh, well, you can grow that, from it. Yeah, then. appreciate the call, yes, Jonathan. I, yeah, that, I, I've learned that's enough, Jonathan. We appreciate it. Okay, that's enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that guy that was going to get to, you know, next thing you know, the fan, you know, starts <laughs> messing around and Wesley Snipes in his boxers and Robert De Niro's on the beach playing with his kid. I, uh, yeah, I, I don't get the talking to athletes and entertainers thinking that you're going to resonate with them. We're just like it's, it's one thing to reach out for yeah, something yeah, yeah. Or, have, or tell them I love your work, a connection, yeah. a request, or something like. It's, it, it's, it's the not understanding booing in me as well. Right. Though, some too. some guys understand. are great about it. You know, some guys I, I, I see Ed Begley Jr. and Andrew Zimmern mm-hmm. and some mm-hmm. of these guys who are really good about reaching out and saying, yeah. "Hey, thanks for this." And you know, I've on, on occasion had a note as a thought, say, "Hey, you might appreciate this. I thought yeah. you might like this." That sort of thing happens. But this, like, you suck. The What's wrong? Like that. Yeah. That's what I don't really understand. It's what like, do you think it's going to do? What does that accomplish? Like f- for us, when you when you reach out on Twitter and say, "I hate your show," "I hate you," why are you it, talking about this? Stop talking right. about this. Go back to Atlanta. Like, do you think no. I'm just gonna I'm gonna get the Penske truck immediately after I'm done reading that tweet and say, "All right, Nicole, we gotta go," because you know this guy with a serial number for a Twitter you know handle wants me to go. Like, Man holding a fish right. says I'm done. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I probably will never get it though.